Cleveland Browns faithful, welcome back to the Cleveland Pulse YouTube channel. It's Jeffrey back with a return guest, Robert. We're going to talk about the Kevin Stefanski press conference today. I have two clips lined up. We're going to roll clip one. We're going to react to clip one. We're going to roll clip two. We're going to react to clip two. I think, I think that maybe the season of interesting takes just got even more interesting today. Robert hasn't seen any of these clips. I'm getting a live reaction from him. I've obviously seen them because I've put the tapes together. And we're going to start with that. But before we get into that, just your general thoughts about yesterday's contest before we, we kick this one off. Well, <laughs> hi, Jeffrey. Thanks for having me on the show. Welcome on in. Um, well, first of all, if, if unless you've been under a rock, uh, once again, our, our beloved franchise, uh, we're the laughing stock of the NFL. No two ways, uh, two ways, no two ways around it. Um, uh, you can't sugarcoat it. Uh, we are the laughing stock of the league, and how we can continue to to put our our confidence and faith and 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 say we're going to continue to trot this guy out there week after week um i don't know i have not heard the press conference you asked me to not listen to it so i'm excited to hear what the coach had to say because i personally don't think that this is his call and we'll get into that later in the show so I, I, I'm excited to play the clip. Would you, let, let's go ahead. Can you do it? Yeah, let's do it. We'll go with clip one right here. It's going to be, it's going to be, uh, uh, they're both about 30 to 40 seconds. So we'll run this one. We'll come back. I'll cut it off. We'll talk and we'll move on from there. All right. This is clip one for you. Um, with the offensive struggles you guys have been having and, you know, the playoff hopes kind of shrinking, just why not try Jameis as a potential spark that you're looking for? Yeah, I, I think it's just important that we continue to do everything we can to play good, sound football. Uh, I think there were moments of that. Obviously, yesterday, um, I, I think Deshaun gives us the best chance to win, continues to give us the best chance to win, uh, and we need to play really good offensive football uh, at his position and really at every position uh, to be to be successful on Sunday. All right, let's start. Deshaun gives us the best chance to win. Instant reaction. He's lying. He, he he's lying. He knows it. You know it. I know it. That's the company line. Whether it's <laughs> it's coming from Jimmy or D, uh, Andrew Barry, um, D Podesta. He's lying. Good sound football. He's 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 full of crap. I mean, I love how he says we saw some of it yesterday. Where? Yeah, where, where, uh, two two false starts when you're trying to, you, you know, you're driving down the field, you you know, you're close to, you know, close to to a, a touchdown that, you know, changes the game. Um, it's not good sound football. It's embarrassing. So and and him, he's discrediting all of the good work that he's done, in my mm. opinion. He's he's dying on the he's falling on the sword, and I'm not sure why. You know, I'm not sure. We've discussed this off air. If if he gets fired, he'll get another job in the league tomorrow. Absolutely. Um, I, I I'm not sure. Well, I, I have my opinion that somebody up upstairs is telling him to make to make it work with this kid. We screwed the pooch. We made the wrong decision. Now we have no choice. We got to make it work. Um, but I, I, him to continually say that it's embarrassing for the franchise. He's he's he he's embarrassing himself. He must think that we are idiots because at one in five, what the hell is he watching? What are we? I mean. It's atrocious, and I said it before, and I'll probably say it a, a, another thousand times. We are once again the laughing stock of the NFL. Can I please see clip two? We're gonna. All right, let's go to clip two. Before, <sighs> but as a, as a little as a little segue, I think that we'll talk about this kind of all encompassing. But 
We've talked about it all day. Barry Stefanski, both got extensions. I miss the I miss the world where you know they used to share coaches' salaries, but this is all you could find on the guy. Exact figures of his new salary have not been disclosed. Reportedly one of the highest paid coaches in the league. So I agree with you. He's fallen on the sword, but the the, the contract number must be staggering for him to be behaving like this. He's either <laughs> he's either lying or he's delusional. And I don't know which one's worse at this point. Let's hold off. We're going to go into clip two. I'm so, I'm so excited to hear your reaction to clip two. Oh, Let, boy. Let's roll it. Yeah, Kevin, I know that we asked you this uh, last week, but it seems to be that the prevailing narrative uh, still seems to be that everyone thinks that Jimmy Haslam is forcing you to play Deshaun Watson. So I, I, I guess I just want to throw it out there again and ask how – how is this decision made and is there any truth to that whatsoever? Well, as you know, Mary Kay, I don't get caught up in narratives, um, but I have a, we have a good dialogue with myself, Andrew, ownership about all things that have to do with this team. Uh, they've been nothing but supportive uh, and any decision when it comes to football is my decision. Any decision that comes with fo to football is his decision. <clears throat> Full reaction. I mean, deep. <laughs> I mean, anything that comes to football is his decision. I, I, I how do you want me to answer that? that, that that's a blatant. First of all, I mean, I, I'm I'm stunned because this is a guy that I like, and I think he's done a hell of a job. And why? It, how do you answer that question that way? There's a million ways that you could. I, I think there's other ways you could answer that question without selling out the Haslam's and Barry and De Podesta. But to, to say he is he, now, what he is saying, correct? What he's telling the, the NFL, the, the 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 national media, the fans that are going down to the stadium on Sunday, me and you. And every other podcaster, everyone that's bitching about it, that it's his decision to trot this moron out there, and he's the one running these plays that this guy that this guy doesn't understand. That 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 he, I, I, I mean, and we're supposed to believe that? I, I oh, <laughs> I, no, I I don't buy it. I, I, I it, it's so interesting to me because I just think he, I think he. The season is already concluded, in my opinion. You, you, you know, you have the uh, the 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 tweets have already come in of of our draft standing and where we are in the order. You know, top two pick currently, whatever it may be. So physically on the field, I think that that reality has been accepted. But but excuse me. Go ahead. I I heard I heard on local radio today. Our next two games, we haven't played a division game. Now, this is how correct the, the state, we'll call it the state-run media that is maybe is on the payroll of the Cleveland Browns. Correct. Our next two games are division opponents. Yep. Now, somewhere in their heads, they think we played a decent game against the Eagles, which is the Eagles are a mess. Right. Now, just just bear bear with me. This said reporter was champion on the radio, saying that, well, we beat the Bengals, then we win again next week. We're mm. three and five, and anything could happen. Now, what world are you living in, living in that you think we're going to beat the Bengals, and then who are we playing? The Ravens? Correct. I mean, are you out of your mind? It, it's just to me is so so that you're redeeming you're redeeming quality if you have one if you just want to look at bare bones numbers if you didn't watch any of the games or if you didn't know any of the scores if you just if somebody sat you down and said look the browns are one and five through six weeks however comma they only have one conference loss we only have one loss in the afc and i'm not I'm making this very clear. I'm not carrying water for this franchise because there's no 
indicative pieces of evidence that 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 give me any hope that we're going to turn around and beat the Bengals at home and then oh we'll beat the Ravens the next week. The Ravens are actual good team. The Ravens will be the actual first good team that we've played. We can't beat the bad teams. Right. But but it let's if you do, you're only the only shred of hope you're hanging on to is that let's just say we do win the next two games by the by the the grace of God. You're 3 and 1 in the AFC. I mean, it's not the end of the world. Three and five with three AFC wins. You've lost. You've so whoever made the NFL schedule, congratulations for being just bizarre with our division. But you've already lost to one whole division in football. We've right. we we lost to every team in in the NFC East or whatever that whatever division that is. We've already lost to all of them. That division is wrapped up and done. Those are our NFC games, basically out of the way. Is there some mastermind plan where it's like, oh, we're going to ramp up? You know, there's no mastermind plan at one and five. And Stefanski admits that in the press conference. But it's like you get Chubb back this week, whatever. We'll talk about the Bengals. I will say good on Mary Kay for asking this question. It doesn't sound like the, this is the first time this question has been asked. And 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 that's fine. Do it like that. You, ever they should all be saying Jimmy Haslam. You know, call him out by name. We, you know, there's no shadow people here. Oh, are there higher ups telling you not to play him? Who cares right. who it is? Right. It's all under the Haslams. Right. What kills me about his answer is is not only does he actually talk about Barry and Haslam, he says, "Oh, you know, we have we have important discussions together." Whatever verbiage he used. Good dialogue. Good, good dialogue. dialogue. Good dialogue. Then he turns around and says. Oh yeah, you know, I make all the decisions. He didn't have to say any of that. He could have no. went back he could have went back to oh, you know, you know, Watson gives us gives us the best chance to win. He could have went back to a recycled line from earlier that had nothing to do with anything about him and he could have went on with his life. He brings in the top brass slowly from, you know, stage left. And then, oh, every decision I make is, you know, any decision is my decision. Okay. Nobody believes you, and and now everybody thinks you're lying. You lost credibility with the locker room, and you've right. lost credibility with the fan base. Right. How you could say at this point that anybody that that, that he gives us the best chance to win? It, it, it's staggering. Jameis Winston has won games in the NFL. Yes, he's thrown a lot of interceptions. I, it, it, it's 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 hard to believe that. These this patchwork offensive line, I, I, I believe it all goes back to the lack of effort being put in in practice. I believe that it stems from the lack of preparation from your so-called the, the the quarterback is supposed to be the team leader, the rah rah. How many times have we seen that video of Jameis in preseason? Correct. Or, 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 or you know, rallying the guys. Yeah. When have we ever seen James? Oh, okay, excuse me. We saw Deshaun holler at uh, uh, Dewan Dewan Jones, Jones once. One time. You've never seen him rally the troops. What, what, uh, uh, Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper is a destroyed football. He's a destroyed human being. The Cleveland Browns have ruined Amari Cooper. Now think about that. Now, no, he's not uh he's not Jerry Rice or he's not Michael Irvin, but he was a good football player. He was good last year. We have ruined that man. <laughs> he looks absolutely miserable. Why? I believe it all stems from this man, number four. He, he's he, he the, the culture is destroyed right, right now. And and honestly, the I don't think there's there's a, a very small per, percentage of the fan base who truly believes if we put Winston in the game that we will like suddenly be the number one offense and score forty points a game. Ninety five percent of Browns fans who are rational people don't believe that it's going to be a one eighty you know, complete, you know, 500 yard passing five, five touchdowns. We beat somebody by 30, but every game we've lost, even the Dallas game at some, at some junctures of that game, 
we you don't even you didn't you didn't even need that. We've gone from 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 oh if 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 Watson's a game manager, we'll win games. He's fallen below that level. He can't even get to game manager numbers to put to put us in a chance to win or to have a a game winning drive. We're only asking for what five percent better production out of the quarterback play, ten percent better production out of the quarterback play, one or two more scores, and we have a couple more wins on this season. It's not like we're we're looking for Tom Brady to walk through the doors or somebody and you know, hey, we're gonna do this. Another thing before I let you speak. The 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 quarterback is the signal caller of the offense. It's like a it's like a catcher or or a shortstop in baseball. You're 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 running the team. You're running the the other guys around you. If you can't, if you have multiple false starts, sometimes it's going to be on the offensive lineman, obviously. But All if right. you don't have your guy set up in the right spot, if you're behind the plate and there's a guy on first base and a, a ball gets hit in the gap, and you tell your right fielder to throw to third base and the guy is running home, that's going to be if if you're screaming three, that's the wrong. You're pulling the wrong string right there. Right. So if you can't get people set up. You're not practicing with them enough. You're not preparing with them enough. And it shows on Sundays. It shows on Sunday. And he just doesn't care. And he just doesn't care. Okay, so if if take the Cowboys game out of the equation. Okay. Let's just say you had Joe Flacco here. How many of those games do you win? Somebody for sure you win yesterday's game. Somebody, somebody uh, who I will not name reliably inform me we would be five and one. And I kind of agree. I think and the only game we would have lost is the Dallas. I still think we would have lost the Dallas game. Every other game has been six point loss to the Giants, four point loss to the Raiders, the Commanders. Maybe you lose that game too. I think you have four wins though. Maybe you beat the Cowboys with Dak and you lose the Commanders game. I don't know. Okay, now think about this. That's kind of Kevin Stefanski's. You know, he's always we haven't blown out a lot of teams and we haven't gotten blown out a lot. That's kind of Stefanski, kind of who he's been, Correct. right? We always kind of hang around. And if we had competent play, competent play out, out of our quarterback, because, you know, our defense, as much as I'm on Schwartz right now, and as much as our defensive backs to me are disgusting, our defense is somehow 12th. Our defense, our pass defense is seventh. Our, our, our rush defense is a little bit farther down, but they're on the field too much. And Schwartz is trying to do, he's blitzing more than he should because I do think they're, they're trying to score. They're trying to make something happen. Maybe. They, they figure if they don't score, shit, the offense, if the, the there's no hope. Jeffrey, there's no hope. And, and you I might as well send the house and try to get a turnover because you know that if they all right, let's say they punt the ball and we go three and out, you're just going to be back on the field again. You're going to be right back on the field. So let's blitz them and hope we get a strip sack and we can score. And that and those are those are plenty fine statistical numbers of a defense where the team should be winning games. Top ten pass defense. It hasn't really looked like that, but I mean, honestly, how many how many weeks do we have to say you know we're playing um, you know we're playing a above average talent, a great talent, even shading into elite. We've done good against a handful of these guys. Saquon Barkley wasn't really otherworldly yesterday. Um, CD lamb didn't have some huge game against us. Jaden Daniels, one of his, you know, poor games of the season statistically came against us. No, he but, had, but, but Malik neighbors and Daniel Jones. Correct. That's the, the criminal one. Half, it, it took us a whole half. To yes. You're out to put Denzel Ward. That was a mistake. Correct. But it's not like it's not like we've been getting blown out by. And I mean, the Raiders, you don't you don't really you don't really play anyone who's you know too big of a threat on that offense. We just literally can't we can't score the football. No, not not at all. Not at all. I still can't. I, I still can't get over. I, I, I can't get over Kevin saying Deshaun gives us the best chance to win. Line or delusional. There's those are your only options. There's no way, there's no way that I could be convinced that he actually truly believes that. He doesn't believe that. And I think and, he he's known, I think he knows, and, and, and here's what here's what they gotta do. He, at this point now, yes, you you just keep trotting him out there 
and I think you said it yourself the, uh, last night. Let's do some. Let's do some more RPOs. Some quarterback powers. Run them. Let might run, as well. Run, you know, might as well. And honestly, this this front office has just has backed itself into a corner because, and they they are always going to have the lip service. Um, that's obvious. But we talked about it earlier on this uh, on the phone. You drafted DTR young rookie quarterback you have him in your back pocket Jameis winston and i'm looking at his numbers right now based on what i can remember here Jameis winston all right he's not making that much money this year i thought he was making more money than that truthfully but you know you went out and you made a backup quarterback acquisition in the offseason and like i said they could play that as many different ways they want well watson's arm and his shoulder whatever and you know he's 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 been injured before so we want to have good insurance um you know behind them but it's not like you just when when a couple of your offseason moves were quarterback and then it's you're one in five and you don't want to bench the starting quarterback you you lose credibility been awful. Right. You lose, been yeah awful. you just look stupid like how right. many how many backup quarterbacks did we go through this offseason we had right. winston they they kept dtr obviously we had tyler huntley on the right. roster for a minute right. you got you're carrying four quarterbacks at one point right. and yeah obviously you weren't going to do that into the season but it's and, like and, what what were you doing getting reps between huntley and winston to see who would be better and, and and they got winston because they knew nobody would be calling for Winston. You know what I'm right. saying? The, the Cleveland, right. the, the average fan, and, and, and here's the, the national media is is still going on and on about the fact that Andrew Barry came out and, and they 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 admitted, no, you know, we didn't even offer Joe Flacco a contract because we didn't. They, they how could you admit? We're, we're that ignorant. We don't, eat, we're, we're not going to, no, 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 Joe, thanks for everything, but we're not even going to offer you a contract because if, if if the chosen one throws an interception, we don't want them booing him and, and calling for you. God forbid we win a football game and make the fans happy. I mean, just think about the, the stupidity of, of, of what we are, we do not deserve what is going on yet again now now we're going to get way off topic but when we were 0 and 16 and 1 and 15 we were a bunch of tryhards correct they, they were they, they were terrible but every week they went out there and tried this team has talent and 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 starting at the top because he doesn't try and he doesn't care. I've said this maybe not on air, but I've said it a million times. Folks out there and wherever you're watching this, if you hit the lottery tonight, you hit the lottery. How how much motivation are you going to have to get up and go to work tomorrow? Be honest. Not much, folks. And that's what we are stuck with. We are dealing with. And that's the, the the bottom line, the truth. Okay, so the, now now we're gonna go, Jeffrey. Hear me out here. What we we're stuck. Ken Dorsey. We don't know who's off one offense we're running. <laughs> we don't know what anything. What the hell are we running? It's not Stefanski's. What Stefanski's is put the quarterback under center, play action. That's what worked, whether it was Baker, whether it was P.J. Walker, Joe Flacco. What the hell are we doing? Whose offense is this? It, it's it's even more granular than that to me because every week we have these plays where the wide receiver is running around, the ball is – it's, it's it's not a it's not a bad looking pass. It's not like it comes out of his hand wobbly. It's just the ball looks like it was intended for a completely different route. They don't even know. We don't even know what's going on. the The blame game is so deep. Besides the fact that of the obvious, the quarterback isn't very good, and they have no plans to change the quarterback. That's basically all we know right now. And we kind of know that the Haslam's are behind everything. At least right. it's a high likelihood, a 60, 60, 70 percent chance. There's right. no way there unless Barry has some weird, huge closeted ego 
that 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 nobody knows about and it's not involved with his track his track history at all or his, whatever it is and he's just like oh yeah you know this was my idea watson we're just going to keep playing them and the haslams actually aren't saying anything but i find well, it hard to believe, believe. yes yeah, the fans he just said that that, that that they're in discussions they're in conversations so it's it's like i loved the first half of how he answered it because he like put the smoke signal up like yep Haslam's me, Barry, we do talk about it, but then he goes, Oh, you know, that's all he should have said. And then, and then it would have confirmed to the fan base without confirming that obviously they're the head of the snake and what they say goes, but we don't even know whose fault miscommunication is on the field because that's how much this offense lacks identity when it comes to, and that's another thing. Can he not figure out how to do play action reads? Can he not, can he not read a defense pre-snap at the line of scrimmage and then go from there? It looks not. It looks like that every single week, more and more. It it, it appears as if, do we ever, do do you see us ever uh, uh, audibling at the line of scrimmage? I mean, we check down all the time, but that looks like he's checking down right away. It looks like that he's, you know, he's calling from that. I mean, I, I, is that is that Dorsey's book? I mean, maybe we should go back and look at at what Josh Allen was was running in Buffalo. If we called some called some of our friends up in Buffalo, they hated Dorsey. Correct. They they, were, lo- you know, what, they ran. Him they've been good the ever since he's left. Their offense has been good ever since he left. Right. And right. of course, we bring him in. So, All right. It's it's you, you almost know, real quick with the Haslam's. If if you notice the Kansas City Chiefs. Sure. Their ownership, they own the team. Andy Reid, the front office, that's what they do. Yep. Very successful franchise. You, you've got you've got a, a buffoon in Vegas who sticks his his sticks his nose and everything. They're a mess. You've got Jerry Jones. Happy birthday. He's eighty two. Look at the Cowboys. Yep. They got boat raced yesterday. Here's my point. You've got these millionaire, billionaire owners who sh- who have all this money and they think they know something about football, which is what we have here in Cleveland. And the Haslam's have done nothing. Oh, oh, they have since they brought us, since they bought this team, they've done nothing but dig us deeper into hole. I mean, we were on such a good path, such a good path, and then this move is going to set us back. Who knows for how long? Carry the on. End, the end of this, the 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 remaining years of this decade, as far as I'm concerned, unless and that's the thing. That's what kills me. Like, before we wrap up here, what is your like? Like you're stuck with this guy. What is your what is your plan after this year? Let's say you okay. get a high. Let's say you get a high draft pick. What are you going to do? Not draft a quarterback and then trot him back out there? Like this franchise is. This week will be interesting, and we're going to have to monitor everything involved all the way through the last whistle and, and, and triple zeros on the clock because I don't think they're going to have one play without booze. I don't think that they're going to go – like I don't know if the fans are going to give them one offensive drive. I think as soon as they trot themselves on, onto the field, it's going to be boo birds and go from there. They could score a touchdown on the first drive, and, and, and there still might be booze. I would just love to be a fly on the wall in that stadium because do you think they're going to announce the offensive starters to the, to the oh, fans? No, defense? Oh no, no. Defense. They're going to go defense and they're going to, you know what they should do? They should just announce Nick Chubb and just move on with her. Don't announce yeah, anybody absolutely. else. Here's what, here's what my, my thinking Sunday, hopefully Stefanski for, for their sake, he has one of those, Eight, nine, ten play drives, he dials up and they score a touchdown. Yep. Chubb is involved. Maybe he breaks one. The only saving grace for this whole thing this weekend is Nick Chubb. Yep. Okay. Um, we get down early. It's the same old crap. Halftime, that stadium's going to be half empty. You're going to see the bags over their heads. It's going to be the same old back to the old. We're angry. We're mad. Everyone's pissed, right? Uh, there, nobody likes that guy to begin with, right? So uh, that's just the fact. Cincinnati never plays good in September. They're starting to line it up. They're starting to play well. 
I think Burrow is probably going to have a great day. We're not, we don't seem to give a shit right now. It, 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 the outlook isn't good. So the only, like I said, the only thing that may be a, of excitement is Nick Chubb. Moving forward, moving forward, if this, if this was my outfit, here's what, here's what I would do. You keep Stefanski. You move on from Schwartz. You get rid of Barry. Okay. Analytics, in my opinion, analytics should be, it, it's needed. You should, your organization should not be run by analytics. I feel there's a place for analytics, but it could not dominate. Every move cannot be based on analytics. Okay. So Di Podesta, if he's there, how much you could keep him around. But after all of this, Barry has got to be the fall guy. We all would like to get rid of Haslam, but we can't. Right. But, if you and I had enough money, we'd buy the team and get rid of the SOB. Absolutely. But Barry's got to go. And and right now, I don't have the guy, but I will. I'll, I'll figure out who we should hire. Barry's draft picks have, obviously, we haven't hit home runs. So here's what you do. Now we're, we're an old team. You got, you're you going to have to go out. You're going to tell Stefanski, Kevin, you put your coaches in here, okay? You get rid of Dorsey. It, 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 if you want to keep Schwartz, I, I think it's time to move on. Kevin, you put your coaches in here, okay? I think Stefanski is a hell of a coach. You let him coach. You're going to have to go. It, maybe you give DTR a shot. You go out and you get a guy. Out, you, you're going to have to hope to be 500 with the guys you got. And you're going to have to, we're going to have to start it all over. That's what, and, and you're going to have to get out from under this. That's what, that, it's the sad truth, in my opinion. Get out from under this, get rid of Barry, get out from this analytical bullshit, keep Stefanski, let him, let it, let him really do what he said today. Let him make the football decisions because I'll say it again, folks. Stefanski won with five different quarterbacks last year. Literally. I, if 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 Stefan if I could see a quarterback up under center, if I could see play action passing, I will stand on the top of the roof. Literally. Because how beautiful was it when we had play action passing and the ball was getting out of the quarterback's hands? And if it was folks, uh, Jerome Ford ran for a thousand yards last year. We can't get a running back run to run for 10 yards. And I know the line, the line, the line, the line. Our line was beat up last year. Watson has time this year. You see the clean pocket. He doesn't know what the hell to do with the football. Don't give up on Stefanski. That's my opinion. Rebuild. This was a colossal mistake. The problem is, the problem is we are diehard fans. We will get over this guy. It sucks. We'll always be here. Nephew. I love it. I think that somebody's the, – the scapegoat – I don't even know if we're at scapegoats yet. I think this end of the year – this year is just kind of wrapped up and they're just going to run this year and then it'll be a whole, oh, we're making these off-season moves like they do every year. Somebody's got to pay for this. Anal analytics, roll. analytics being a supplementary part of – of the, of the organization makes sense to me. Um, and you're not analytics favors competency. You know, if you're competent and you, 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 you know, you have a, a, a top tier head coach, you have a top tier quarterback. Yeah. yeah. You know, you can miss a fourth down play and, and turn the ball over. If you have a top tier defense and, and you know, when you get the ball back, there's a good chance you're going to score. It should be a tool. It, it should be a tool, not a Bible. It should be an. Ex it should be almost the exception. Not, it's. It can't be the rule. It's got to be. Yeah. It's. It's got to be. Not a rule. All right. Do we? Yeah. Do we? Do we know what's going on here? You know. Don't overthink yourself. We're not reinventing the wheel here. We can't even get. We can't even get the wheels to work, let alone reinvent <laughs> it. So, good discussion. I appreciate yeah. you hopping on. I fear this team. I fear the Haslam's will fire Stefanski. Keep Watson. Keep Barry. Keep themselves. Obviously. Uh, th and that would be 
that would be that would be awful because out of the group that you just mentioned, he's the best one. Look back at, at Barry's draft. Look back at what Andrew Barry's done. And, and and he's Barry's the one. Somebody has to be a fall guy for us to be in the laughing stock again of the NFL. If we would have talked before the year started, you would have talked about the commodes being bad. Of course, the Panthers, the Saints. You would have talked about all of these teams. Nobody for a million years would have thought the Browns would have been one. And I mean, we are an awful one in five. Yep. We, I mean, it's not like we're getting. Last, it's not like we're getting jokes. Like we're losing in, games. In our last twenty nine drives, we scored one time. I mean, just think about the futility. So I, I mean. I think somebody's got to pay for this. I hope it's not Stefanski, but maybe you're right. And, uh, you know, we're not, you know, we have eyes. We're not dumb. You know, you, you win 11 games last year. And when, you know, Vegas runs all their simulations and, and, and goes through all of their calculations and they come out and say that the, that the win total is eight and a half. Yeah. I mean, you're thinking, Hey, you're, there's going to be some regression from last year. Not like not this, this much, not like this, not like this. No. So, it's going to be a lot to talk about moving forward. Appreciate you hopping on again. Um, yes, we'll be talking more in the future. And, yeah, if you if you uh, stuck around this long, appreciate you guys being here. Make sure you're hitting that like button. Make sure you subscribe down below and uh, sharing this with your friends. We're going to make it together. This is all we have left is the fan base. That's um, right. These jokers, if you like Barry, if you like Stefanski, if you like the Haslams, if you hate them all, you know these jokers are are, are, are pulling, the, pulling the rug from out underneath us. And that's pretty much the only way to look at it at this point. But with that being said, we appreciate you guys being the pulse of it all. Peace.